حلوة أيوة أني وحدة عطيت له مثلا الخضراء دي كبر ورود عطيت له وحدة كده كده عزيه فقلت له قلت له مع الحلاوة أصلا إيش تسوي؟ السلام عليكم أبو اثنين بس أبو سفتنا سفتنا اللينزا أستاذ خالد شفتين فدحمد جيب محاضرة مراعيلة زينب الش زينة محمد ريان ديان ريندا روان Yes, salam alaikum, samayni. Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Yes, Prof. Lewis. Prof, how are you? Fine? Yes, I think everything works. Nice to have you today. Thank you. We will start within a few minutes. Thank you. Should we try to check? if the video and everything works perfectly yes i think uh, i have to press the button to share my screen is that right yeah i'm going to do it i'm going to share my screen yes you can share your screen now and now can you see the presentation now yes but start like uh excellent you, you and can now, the first uh, slide let's check if the video works Yes. Okay. Does it work? Uh, you have video in your presentation or just uh, slides? It's a different, it's a different uh, archive. Another presentation. You have presentation only. Okay. You see Can video? you open the first uh, screen, please? The first slide in your presentation. Sorry. Did you see the video during the presentation? I'm seeing the slide only, the slides of your presentation. Ah, okay. Uh, let me know what is happening. And now, can you see the video now? No. 
only the slides of your presentation. Okay, okay. Maybe, yeah, okay. Wait, wait one minute. Uh, I have to select the video. PowerPoint, yes, I have to select this one. Okay. Now I can share and now you will see. Okay. What about? Yes, yes. Now, now it's working. It's good. Okay. That is what I have to, to do. I have to select yeah. the, the presentation or the video because they are different. Okay. Yeah. So quite easy. Uh, uh, okay, here they are. So it's very simple. Okay, now uh, you can share again your screen. No problem. From uh, I'm side. not having. I'm, I'm only sharing my voice. Ah, okay. So you can put uh, your. So, uh, so um, I can uh, start by sharing my. Or you can put your first slide. So the first slide. Yeah. It's okay. Everything is okay. Okay, excellent. When you are ready, just inform me so we can start. Okay, we have time. Mm. And yani we have like eight minutes. Mm. Who is going to do the introduction? Me. You? Dr. Samira Suleiman, yes, breast imaging senior consultant from Al Madina Munawara, Saudi Arabia, King Fahad Hospital. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Hi, working, nice to meet you. You are working with Siemens, isn't it? Yes, we are working yes, with Siemens too. from a long time I'm, ago. Uh, in Saudi Arabia, you been a leader for Siemens in mammography. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So it's good to have you also. Thank you. Here you come. When you want to start, you want to start Yani, at uh, 7.25? Okay, we, I can start when you when you want. I don't know if everybody is connected. To yes, the we have, uh, mashallah, like uh, about two hundred participants. Okay, so uh, if you want, we can start now. Okay. So, will you introduce myself? Uh, will you introduce me, or I will? I, I will introduce you, of course. Okay, excellent. Just give me a few minutes. Assalamu alaikum, Ustaz Khalid Halimda. 25-25-25. Okay, they will be ready within three minutes.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نرحب بكم أخواتي وأخواني الحضور ويتجدد اللقاء بكم في مبادرة التدريب عن بعد وهي أحد مبادرات الإدارة العامة للأشعة والخدمات التطبيقية بوزارة الصحة في المحاضرة رقم أربعة لعام 2021 Our coming presentation is Advanced Application in Breast Imaging and Biopsy. We have today Prof. Luis Pina from University of Navarra at Pamplona. He is head of breast radiology unit. He has several scientific activities, studies, and publications. He is a member of the board and reviewer of the sonological and radiological journals. He's, he, he has several educational activities, lectures at, university, at the Navarra University. He's present, he has several presentations at international congresses, collaboration with Siemens Health in Years, in training and studies, development and testing of products, reference and fellowship sites. Welcome, Prof. Luis. You can start now, please. Salam alaikum. Welcome, everybody, to this meeting about uh, stereotactic and wide angle biopsies. First of all, I want to say that I visited Gira seven years ago. I was invited by Siemens for a meeting about homosynthesis. It was a great experience. I visited this famous jet of water. I had dinner in a very good restaurant. A great experience. Okay, these are the contents of my presentation. Let's start with the introduction. First question, what is the guiding method of choice to perform a breast biopsy? What do you think, ultrasound, stereotaxy, maybe tomosynthesis or MRI? Well, I think it is widely accepted that ultrasound is the preferable one. In fact, ultrasound has become the choice for lesions visible on ultrasound and the most widespread use technique to guide a biopsy. It has a lot of advantages. First, the control of the needle position in real time, the excellent comfort for patients and radiologists. The ultrasound equipment is more readily available than stereotactic or MR units. The local anesthesia does not hide the lesion. The breast is not compressed. Multiple lesions, unilateral, bilateral, can be biopsied in one session. Peripheral lesions are amenable to the technique. Conventional and cheap 14 gauge core needle biopsy systems offers very good results. And finally, it's a cost effective and fast technique. This is how it works. We inject, apply the local anesthetic and perform the biopsy. And we have full control of the needle in the pre-fire and post-fire images in real time. But of course, there are some limitations. First is an operator depending technique. And ultrasound guided biopsies can be very difficult or even impossible in some cases. For instance, lesions not visible in ultrasound, such as uh, clusters of microclassifications and some architectural distortions, and lesions deeply located in fatty and large breasts. For instance, these microclassifications many times are not amenable for an ultrasound guided biopsy because they are not clearly visible. And we can say, the same with some architectural distortions. And these lesions, especially microclassifications, can be associated to uh, premalignant lesions, such as atypical ductal hyperplasia or DCIS. This is why, from a long time ago, we have the stereotactic guidance. It allows you to localize lesions detected in mammography, and it has excellent results for classifications. It is an accurate, reliable technique and usually well tolerated by patients. 
this is how it works. The tube moves from minus 15 to plus 15 degrees, and the system calculates the coordinates of the lesion. Well, in the new revelation, the table is very, very easy to mount because it is a lightweight and it is a fast table mounting. There is no need to remove the detector cover. And uh, a great advantage is the inspect box. What is it? It is an integrated specimen scanner. So we can put the specimens in this box during the biopsy and we can acquire an image to check if the calcifications have been removed or not. In that case, we can continue with the biopsy. Let's uh, have a look at an example. Well, in this case, uh, first we acquire a scout image. It's a very a small breast, very thin breast. And of course, a new positioning is needed because the calcifications are peripherally located very close to the margins of, of the detector. Now, in this case, the localization is much better. And with the TOMO guidance, with this system, we have to make a click on both stereotactic plus and minus 15 degrees. And the system calculates the coordinates. Very simple. It is uh, necessary in the case of micro calcifications to acquire a pre fire and a post fire images so that we can check if the acquisition chamber of the needle is in the correct uh, position. Like in this case, the pre fire and the post fire. And this is the inspect, the integrated scanner. During the biopsy, it is very easy in just uh, a few seconds to acquire. A specimen radiograph to confirm that the microcalcifications have been removed and we can stop the biopsy. Of course, we can acquire images after the vacuum biopsy to know if they are, there are residual calcifications or not and to use a marker after the biopsy. Okay, but this therapeutic guidance has also some limitations because the non-calcified lesions can be obscured by local anesthesia or hematoma and can be very difficult to, to detect the same lesions on both stereotactic views. Also, some peripherally located lesions can be out of the field of view of the detector. Some lesions cannot be visible in one of the stereotactic views. And of course, if the lesion is only detected by tomosynthesis, it is impossible to use the stereotactic guidance. This is why we can now use the 50 degrees wide angle biopsy with tomo. Advantages, well, it combines the excellent quality of the tomo images and the accuracy of the stereotactic system. It is even faster than the stereotactic guidance because you only have to make a click on the lesion and there is no need to identify the same lesion in two stereotactic images, only in one slice. And it is also a well-tolerated procedure. Okay, 50 degrees instead of 15 degrees. The wider the angle, the higher the resolution. Again, we use the same table. It is uh, the same table for the stereotactic or for the tomo guidance. Again, we have also the uh, inspect box to perform the specimen radiograph. And it is very simple to make a click where the vision is. There is a white box and the screen that indicates the targetable area for the preselected needle. And of course, the system is very, very accurate. Okay, this is the workflow with a conventional stereotactic uh, biopsy system. And this is the workflow with uh, the wide angle biopsy.
system. But you can see it can be even easier because you only have to make a click where the lesion is on the Tomo slice. Let's have a look at one example. This is a cluster of microclassifications. With the Tomo system, you only have to make a click where the lesion is, and that is all, instead of making a click in two different uh, images. Sometimes it can be very difficult on stereotactic, uh, with a stereotactic system to know which one is the same classification when you have a lot of microclassifications. But that, uh, that is not a problem with Tomo because you only have to make click in one slice, not in two different views. Of course, you acquire also, in the case of microclassifications, the pre-fire and the post-fire images showing the correct position of the needle and the inner spec, which is really interesting because you check if the classifications have been removed and you can stop the biopsy. And finally, a clip can be put in the biopsy bed. But still, there can be some uh, limitations because the non-calcified lesions can be obscured by local anesthesia or hematoma during the procedure, but it is not really very important because you have the initial slice where the lesion is, and usually there are no movements or the accuracy of the procedure is very, very important. And some peripherally located lesions can be out of the field of view. That can be a problem. And now I can I will move to some uh, to show you some practical tips with biopsies. Okay, again, what is the best technique to guide a biopsy? Well, as a general rule, just choose the guiding method you are familiar with, and choose the guiding method that allows the best visualization of the lesion. You can choose ultrasound, MRI stereotactic or tomo guidance. What biopsy device should we use? Well, conventional 14 gauge corneal biopsies are used for ultrasound guided biopsies with excellent results. And usually for stereotactic or tomo biopsies, 10 to 11 gauge vacuum assisted devices are routinely used. So depending on the guiding method, usually we select different needles. Stereotactic or tomo biopsy. Well, both can be used for mammographically detected lesions, but tomo has the advantage of localizing some lesions that cannot be seen on conventional stereotaxy. For these classifications, the stereotactic approach is fine, no problem. But for a very, very subtle architectural distortion like this one, uh, maybe the stereotactic approach is impossible and we need the TOMO guided biopsy system. This is the localization of the very subtle distortion. It was finally a radial scar. And what is the best approach to the lesion? Well, if possible, use the shortest way from the skin to the lesion. A 90 degrees pure lateral mammography is very useful to decide the best approach. Both craniocaudal and lateral approaches are possible with these stereotactic or tomoguided systems. Two compression paddles are available with the system. A fenestrated paddle, which is used for the craniocaudal approach, and a non-fenestrated paddle for the lateral approach using a lateral arm. I will show you. One fenestrated paddle and the non-fenestrated paddle. The fenestrated paddle is intended for the craniocaudal approach like this, 
and the non-penetrative is intended for using the lateral arm this way. Okay, a lateral approach can be performed using the lateral arm, but also turning the tube 90 degrees, which is also valid for the inner quadrants. And by using a dedicated chair, the patient can be in the decubitus position. So uh, you have to be imaginative because a lot of possibilities can be offered for a biopsy. Okay. Uh, it is not a waste of time to study exactly the localization of the lesion. It is mandatory to know exactly where the lesion is. In this case, the calcifications were located in the upper quadrants, 12 o'clock. That is why a craniocardial approach is fine, like this one. But in this case, in the craniocardial view, the lesion is in the outer quadrants, three o'clock. This is why a lateral approach is much better. And we can also perform a lateral approach by turning 90 degrees the tube. So there are several possibilities. And by using some specific chairs, also we can use this uh, way with a patient lying in a bed. What about the lateral arm? It offers some advantages. The biopsy device is not close to the patient's head. It's important. It is safer to prevent fainting and to avoid damage to the patient. And it is also easier to see the localization of the needle and the lesion. Here you can compare the craniocardial approach and the lateral arm. As you can see with this system, using the craniocardial approach, the driver of the biopsy device is very close to the patient's head. However, by using the lateral arm, the driver is not very close and it is more comfortable for the patient. And even I can say, say it is safer for the patient in order to prevent fainting or lipotemia. Okay, how will the patient be positioned? Usually the patient is sat in front of the mammograph. Remember to remove the earrings because the tube moves very close to the patient's face. Of course, the patient must not see the needle to prevent fainting. And remember the patient's head should be moved to the opposite direction of the biopsy breast. If we are going to perform a biopsy of the right breast, then move the head to the left and the vacuum machine to the right, and just the opposite for the left breast. This is what I want to represent with this uh, uh, drawing. And what to do if I cannot find the lesion? Okay, very subtle lesions can be difficult to be detected even using TOMO. The success of the biopsy begins with a meticulous study of the localization of the lesion to know its shape and size and the presence of natural markers such as calcifications or other lesions. And if you cannot find the lesion, try again, because if the lesion is real, you will finally find it. Let's have a look at this uh, example. There is a, an Intermittent the uh, intercumscribed mast, and you can see the tomo. And this is the first scout and the biopsy machine. And okay, there is no lesion. So what happens? Try again. And finally, we found it. So sometimes it is not possible to see the lesion the first time, but don't despair. Eh? Try again, and you will find it. And should the lesion be centered in the window of the compression paddle? Yes, as, as much as possible, because the lesion can move due to the local anesthetic or due to a hematoma. 
That is why, for instance, in this case, we try to put the micro calcifications just in the center of the paddle. And what to do if we only detect the lesion in one of the stereotactic views? Well, this can happen in subtle lesions and some calcifications, and it's a very, very, very good indication to perform a tomo biopsy. How to inject the local anesthetic? We routinely use 10 milliliters of local anesthetic and bicarbonate. Uh, you can use the light of the mammograph to see the exact point of the injection of um, the anesthetic. First, we inject two to three milliliters of anesthetic using a subcutaneous needle. Then we bend an intramuscular 21 gauge needle and inject the remaining eight milliliters. And of course, additional anesthetic can be necessary through the biopsy needle. Okay, if we are going to use the craniocardial approach by using the light of the mammograph, it's quite easy to identify the exact point to inject the local anesthetic. Then we bend the needle and apply the remaining eight milliliters. And what to do if the lesion is displaced due to hematoma or a small movement of the patient? Okay, in that case, we can use the control of the coordinates to displace the needle to the correct position. But remember that we are using a vacuum-assisted system, which is very, very powerful. And if the displacement is lower than, smaller than five millimeters, there is no need to, to move the, the needle. Just use the, uh, perform the directional biopsy. And should we perform a specimen radiograph? Yes, it is mandatory for calcifications, but not necessary for other lesions, because in the case or in the case of an architectural distortion, you will see nothing on the specimen radiograph. The inspect has been a, a great advancement, advancement because the specimen radiograph is performed during the biopsy and there is no need to remove the needle. So if there are not microcalcifications in the first uh, specimen radiograph, we can continue with the biopsy procedure. And this is a great advantage of this system. This is the inspect box where we put the specimen. And this is a typical specimen radiograph showing in this case, a lot of microcalcifications that validates the biopsy. And can we use these techniques to place a hook wire? Yes, of course. Just make a click where the lesion is, in this case, an architectural distortion. And we can place a hook wire very, very accurately. OK, and now I would like to share with all of you a video showing how to perform a biopsy.
Yes, Miguel. Yes. There's no sound, so I have to speak. Okay, I have to apologize because there was a problem with the sound of the video, but uh, okay, I'm going to tell you what we are going to do. This is our room where we work with the mammograph and here we are positioning the patient who is sat in front of the mammograph. And first we acquire a scout image to know if the calcifications are there. In this case, we had to repeat again the, the scout because the microclassifications that were very tiny were peripherally located. So we repeat it. Here is the scout view showing a, a cluster of microclassifications. And now we acquired the TOMO acquisition. And we have just to make a click where the lesion is. Here it is. And this is the TOMO localization showing the cluster of microcalcifications, and then we confirm the coordinates, the coordinates that are sent to the system. Now we are using this the local anesthetic and the bicarbonate, and we are going to perform this biopsy using the lateral arm, as you can see. It is a preferable one for lesions located in the inner or outer quadrants, like this one. As you can see, the procedure is quickly performed. This is the biopsy system. And now we are going to perform the puncture of the breast. Here we are. Now we will apply, the, we will inject the local anesthetic First, with a subcutaneous needle. As you can see, the procedure is comfortable for the patient who can be talking with a nurse and she cannot see the procedure or the needle. And now we apply more local anesthetic. Here we are. Okay, and now we will insert the needle into the breast. It's okay. And now we will check with a couple of, with a pair of stereotactic uh, images if the localization of the needle is all right. This is the pre fire image, images. Here you can see the pre-fire images showing the correct positioning of the needle tip. Okay, now we acquire the 
this is we are fine this is the fire of the firing the the biopsy system and now we acquire at the post fire images showing again that the localization of the needle is, is correct here are the calcifications everything is okay and we are going to start with the biopsy procedure you know this is a directional system we can acquire 360 degrees or we can acquire a directional uh, specifically directed uh, in a direction not the whole cycle in this case the patient uh, uh, we have to apply more local anesthetic there's a problem we can use it we can inject the local anesthetic through the biopsy needle and continue with the biopsy we continue with the biopsy you know to see the tolerance is very good for the patient especially using this uh, approach with the lateral arm and now in a few seconds we will acquire a first inspect to know if we have finished the procedure or not this is the inspect acquisition here it is but oh there are there is only one calcification or two this is not enough for a diagnosis so we have to continue but that is not a problem because the needle biopsy is inserted in the breast so we have to continue with the biopsy and now we are going to acquire a second inspect image to check if there are calcifications or not these are the specimens and we put these specimens in the inspect box and we acquire another inspect this is the acquisition in just a few seconds and now we can compare the first one and the new acquisitions showing a lot of micro calcifications and finally this is the the deployment of a, of a marker of the biopsy marker and we can stop the biopsy and we finish the procedure okay and now i will continue with the presentation so we use some uh, five cases about biopsies okay first case is a 75 year old lady with no symptoms these are this is the the right breast and there is a there are some uh, heterogeneous cross classifications and there was also an architectural distortion as you can see with the with the arrows there is an architectural distortion on the left and a gross classification on the right uh, arrow okay ultrasound was completely normal that is why we started with a tumor guided biopsy of the architectural distortion and as you can see the cross where the lesion is very very simple very easy and in this case we can see the post fire images it, this is a non classified lesion so the utility of the pre fire or post fire images is not very important because many times you cannot see the lesion because mm, the local anesthetic or the hematoma can hide the lesion but that is that is not a, a real problem because you have a strong directional uh, biopsy system which works perfectly. Okay, and at the same time, after this biopsy, we performed a second biopsy of some of the calcifications that were close to the architectural distortion. And this time we used the stereotactic approach. Here you can see the minus 15 and the 
plus 15 uh, images. In this case, it is important to use the pre-fire or post-fire images to know that the lesion is in the, the needle is in the correct position. And here you have, you can see the inspect of the calcifications. Okay, the biopsy one, the architectural distortion was an invasive tactile cancer. And surprisingly, the gross calcifications of the biopsy two were DCIS. So the take home messages of this case is that both stereotactic and tomo biopsies can be performed consecutively in a patient because it is the same system. You can choose what you prefer, the stereotactic or the tomo, and you can change if you prefer. Let's move to the next case, case number two. It was a 60 year old lady with no symptoms. Here you can see a suspicious mass, very small in the outer quadrants that could only be detected on tomosynthesis. This is why we choose the tomo-guided biopsy system. Here we are using the lateral approach, the local anesthetic. In this particular case, the pre-fire and post-fire images were not necessary because in non-calcified lesions, Usually you see nothing because after the injection of the local anesthetic or the hematoma, uh, the lesion is blurry or it is uh, hidden. hidden. Okay, and this is the biopsy and the, the marker. In this case, this was an invasive tactile cancer luminal A. So the lateral approach can be performed by using the lateral arm, and in my opinion, is highly recommendable for the biopsy procedure. Let's move to case number three. It was a 46-year-old lady with no symptoms. This is a very nice case because, as you can see in this uh, high-resolution MLO tomo, there is a speculated mass that could not be detected on ultrasound. In fact, there is a marker uh, after an ultrasound guided biopsy, but clearly it is not in the lesion. It was a second lesion, a benign lesion. So we have to perform another biopsy, this time using the TOMO guided system. And here you can see on the TOMO guided system, the the small speculated mass measuring four millimeters. And we only have to make a click where the lesion is and to perform the biopsy. Again, the pre-fire or post-fire images are not useful because it is a non-calcified lesion. And this is finally a small hematoma and the clip after the biopsy. And this was an invasive ductal cancer measuring only four millimeters. So the tomo-guided biopsy system is needed for lesions that are only detected on DVT. In this case, it would be impossible to perform a biopsy with ultrasound or with stereotactic systems. Next case is case number four, a 57-year-old lady with no symptoms. As you can see, there are some uh, suspicious microclassifications. They are linear and highly suspicious for malignancy. This is the tomo slice where the calcifications are. And we only have to make a click where the calcifications are, and that is all. In this case, this is a calcified lesion. We can perform the pre-fire and the post-fire image. And here, again, we can see the inspect, very useful to show the calcifications and Finally, the clip after the biopsy. This was DCIS. And the last case, case number five, a 72-year-old 72 lady with no symptoms, again, with a cluster of tiny microclassifications. Here you can see the pre-fire and the post-fire images. Again, very nice, the inspect image 
showing the classifications and the clip marker after the biopsy. This case was also DCIS. Okay, thank you for your attention. And now, if you have any question, I will be glad to answer. Thank you too much, Prof. Luis, for your nice informative presentation. And now it's that the time for some questions. Actually, I have some of the questions from the audience. First of all, what is the role of vacuum assisted biopsy in your practice? Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Prof. Louis? Prof. Louis? Can you hear me? Prof. Louis? Thank you for your presentation. And actually, we are having some questions. What is the role of vacuum assisted biopsy in your practice? Prof. Louis? I don't know if the moderator wants to ask any questions. Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here, Prof. Louis. Anybody can hear me? Anybody hearing me? Prof. Louis, we are having some question. Prof. Louis, what is the role of vacuum assisted biopsy in your practice? Yes, Miguel. What is the role of vacuum assisted biopsy in your practice, Prof. Louise? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we are hearing okay, you. Okay, I'm well. sorry I had a problem with the volume of my ear. Yes, here. thank you and for I your informative presentation. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't hear anything. Okay, yes, sorry for that problem. Sorry. I repeat the question like several times. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, okay. It's okay. Now both. I can hear you perfectly. Please. Uh, yes. Uh, you can you please me? answer some of the questions? What is the role of vacuum assisted biopsy in your practice? The, well, uh, the vacuum assisted biopsies are used mainly for clusters of micro calcifications and for architectural distortions. And we routinely perform about two to three uh, biopsies with this system every week. This is our volume. But also, of course, it depends on the, on, on the number of patients you have at your hospital. OK, thank you. The second question. In your screening program, what you prefer to use 2D mammography or 3D mammography? Okay. Uh, we are not working in a population based screening, but in an opportunistic screening. So it means that uh, the gynecologists at our hospital are the ones who, who ask for mammograms for the patients. And we routinely perform the 3D images for everybody because it has been proved that the sensitivity of, uh, of tomosynthesis is much better than the sensitivity of conventional mammography. But still, we perform a craniocaudal prime conventional mammography because for the evaluation or for the detection of microcalcifications, the conventional prime image, the conventional 2D, is better than the, uh, the resolution of uh, tomosynthesis. So what we do in our daily practice is a combo mode in the craniocaudal um, view. It means we acquire a conventional 2D prime. It's a high resolution, very good quality image in the craniocaudal view to detect microclassifications and a tomosynthesis in the craniocaudal. And regarding the medolateral oblique view, we perform only the tomo, a conventional tomo, a 3D. So we have 
uh, with this uh, protocol, we have uh, TOMO on both uh, views, in the clinocaudal and, and on the MLO. And we also have a conventional 2D with a very, very uh, high resolution for the detection of very uh, tiny microclassifications. Okay, thanks, Prof. Luis. The last question, uh, did you find from your experience that TOMO biopsy with 3D superior than TOMO biopsy with 2D mommography? Uh, okay, no, the, I, I think there is a mistake because the TOMO biopsy is, um, is directed by tomosynthesis. It's a directly a 3D uh, technique. If we are talking about yes, the 2D- sorry, I mean stereotactic are, biopsy. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, a 2D uh, technique is the stereotactic. Okay, I think it is uh, clearly um, better to use the TOMO guidance because uh, it, is, uh, is, it is easier. You only have to make a click where the lesion is. You select the slice where the lesion is. However, by using the stereotactic approach, you have to identify the same lesion on both views. Obviously, for very clear clusters of microclassifications, both can work. But in my personal experience, it is a little bit uh, faster to use the TOMO system than the conventional stereotactic views. But of course, uh, the stereotactic uh, views uh, work uh, perfectly for very clear microclassifications. The problem comes when the lesion can be detected in only one of the views, then you have to, to choose, of course, the TOMO guided system. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Luis, for this information and for answering the audience questions. And we would like to meet you in the upcoming uh, events. And thanks for all audience. And thank you for all. We finish now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We can finish now. Thanks for all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.